I want to read an article that I read today on www.firstwivesworld.com. It's entitled My Narcissistic Ex-Husband, but this could apply to husbands, wives, siblings, parents, bosses, co-workers, the gamut, you name it, you might be dealing with a narcissist that makes you feel a certain way. Reflections on Loving and Living with a Narcissist Let our experts guide you toward the healing power of moving on and allowing yourself some time in the spotlight. Get advice on healing from his behavior and finding yourself again. My Narcissistic Ex-Husband's Favorite Technique Gaslighting Posted by Mary, Monday, September 9, 2013 at 1634 You took that wrong. I didn't say that. You have it all wrong, again. Do these statements sound familiar? If so, you're a part of a large group of women and men who have experienced what psychologists call gaslighting. It happens to be one of the primary techniques that a narcissist uses to manipulate and control those around him. Psychologists coined the term after a 1944 movie, Gaslight, in the movie Ingrid Bergman stars as a woman who as a child witnessed the murder of her aunt. She meets a man, played by Charles Boyer, who wines, dines, and charms her, until she finally falls madly in love with him, and they're married soon after. The husband begins to isolate his wife from others, allowing her no visitors and not letting her go out in public. He says that he's protecting her, taking care of her, since she's so sensitive and easily stressed. He begins to do things deceptively that make her believe things about herself that are not true. Is this starting to sound familiar at all? In one scene, he takes his wife out to a friend's house and shows her that his watch has disappeared from its chain. He then finds it in her purse, convincing her that she really is not mentally healthy and cannot be trusted. He then steps up his plan to make her think she's crazy. When she hears his footsteps in the attic, he tells her that she's hearing things, and when the gas lights flicker, he doesn't admit that he has caused it. He is, as you may have guessed, the murderer of her aunt, and is using his wife to give him access to her aunt's jewels. Like Charles Boyer, the narcissist is a genius when it comes to twisting reality for their own purposes. It doesn't matter what the truth actually is. He has a way of ultimately showing you that it is really your own fault and that you aren't seeing things clearly. Before long, you learn to accept that you're so mentally off that you can't trust your own perceptions. A classic example of gaslighting. After I'd been married for about seven years, I picked up a paintbrush for the first time in nearly a decade. My father paid for me to attend art classes with a local artist and I was thrilled to be painting again. I was a stay-at-home mom with two preschoolers and getting out once a week was heaven. I suppose I was concentrating on getting reacquainted with oil paint and turpentine a bit too much. I don't know. I do know that for the first time in seven years, I was doing something that did not revolve around my husband, and I used some of my free time pursuing my muse. Dinner was on time, the house was clean, and the kids were cared for, but I often pulled out a canvas after I had tucked my children to bed. One evening, he came home an hour late from work. It was late, the kids were already in bed, and I'd lost track of time while I worked on a new painting. My husband walked in, slammed the door, and when I looked up from my canvas, he snarled, I don't appreciate you questioning me about where I've been. I am an adult, after all. He then strode into the bedroom to change clothes. Was my first response the thought that he had done something and felt guilty? Was it that he had lost his mind? No. I felt immediately guilty for having a distrustful look on my face. I put my work away and rushed in to try to smooth things over. I apologized and offered to fix him a snack. He graciously forgave me, and I put my painting away for a couple of weeks so that he wouldn't have to be bothered with my messes and my lack of attentiveness. I found out about a month later that he had been seeing another woman. His snappiness was caused by guilt, not by what I had done. Even then, he somehow was able to convince me that he was the victim. My concentration on painting made him feel left out and unloved, and so he sat solace with someone else. I felt terrible and gave up painting so that he wasn't inconvenienced. That was in 1987, and I have not painted since. The narcissist uses the gaslighting technique with a special skill. 
It allows him to control his environment, as well as to control your emotions, responses, and behavior. Over time, he continuously plants seeds of doubt in your mind about the validity of your own feelings and perceptions. Eventually, you stop believing your own opinions and begin accepting whatever he says is truth. You become compliant, confused, and needy. After all, you can't take care of yourself, can you? Look at how wrong you are about nearly everything. Getting your confidence back. If you've been living with a narcissist for a long time, you may feel that you've lost all ability to function as an intelligent human being. By the time I divorced, I no longer felt confident about my looks, my ability to use technology, driving ability, or the reliability of my thoughts and emotions. It's not an easy thing to come back from, but you can do it. I did. 1. Recognize that you've been deceived. The first step is to recognize that you have been deceived. Your thoughts and opinions are valid, and your emotions are not silly, overly dramatic, or wrong. It's important to begin your own emotions even if it means writing out your feelings in a journal. Use phrases like, I am angry because, when he does that I feel, and I have a right to my emotions. 2. List your strengths. If you've been hearing for years how you can't do this or that very well, or you're impossible with math, or you don't handle money responsibly, then you'll need to reprogram your perception of yourself, and that's not always an easy thing to do. Think about what you used to be good at. Maybe you got straight A's in English or history. Perhaps you're an excellent singer or musician. Whatever it is, make a list of as many things you can think of that you do well. If you have trouble thinking of things, ask your close friends to help you. You're making a list so that you can refer to it daily. If it's written down, you can see it and remind yourself of who you are as often as you need to. 3. Begin to try. Usually those of us who have been subjected to gaslighting stop trying new things. There's really no point since we can't do it well anyway. We become afraid to step out and try to do things on our own, especially things that we don't feel confident about. The only way to get around this is to push yourself to try new th to try new things. Challenge yourself to do something or learn something new each day, no matter how silly it seems. 4. Call him on it. When he says something that isn't true, you don't have to agree. Look him in the eye and tell him he's wrong. If you're in a public place and he says something that is not true, don't just laugh nervously and agree. Don't assume that he is right and your memory is faulty. Just tell him that his version is not the way you remember it. 5. Seek professional help. There's not a thing wrong with seeking professional counseling to help you crawl out of that hole. You have been brainwashed for years and it will take some time to get healing. A counselor can lead you in such a way that you see the lies that you've been believing and show you how to put them to rest and embrace the truth. Recognize that it really isn't you. When you're first in love with someone, it is easy to cover their bad habits in a variety of ways. If you blame yourself for an argument, for example, then you can control it so it doesn't happen again. Only it does, over and over again. You are constantly told that if you were more this or less that, then there wouldn't be so many problems in your relationship. That is a lie that you need to recognize. You are who you are, and while you may not be perfect, you are as close to it as anyone else. When I first began writing, I landed a nice cookbook deal that paid enough to pay off a lot of the debt that accrued. When I got the email with the contract and the go-ahead, I was, as you might expect, very excited. I rushed into the room my ex was in at the time and announced gleefully, I got a cookbook deal! He looked up at me briefly, shrugged, and nodded before going back to what he had been doing. I immediately realized that a cookbook deal really wasn't that big of a thing and my pride was heavily clipped. I look back on that now and know that even if it had been a contract to do a series on a food network, he would have reacted exactly the same. Nothing I could do would ever be more impressive to him than himself. The gaslighting technique is a powerful way to manipulate someone, but it only works if you accept that someone else's feelings and perceptions are more valid than yours, which is, of course, just silly. First Wives World is a community devoted to hearing your stories. Register today and share your experience with a narcissistic ex-husband.